Hey everybody, what's happening? Neil back once again with another film review for you, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, which came out in 2019. Spoilers! Spoiler alert! I'm not going to talk about everything because there's too much to talk about. I don't want to make this too long of a review, but I will be spoiling the main plot points here, so you've been warned. All right. This film was directed by three different people. It was directed by Joaquim Dos Santos, Kemp Powers, and Justin K. Thompson, uh, from a script by Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and David Callahan. And it stars uh, Shamik Moore, Haley Steinfeld, Jason Schwartzman, Daniel Kalua, and Oscar Isaac, among others. And it's also part one, so i got to get that out of the way. This is part one. There will be a cliffhanger ending to this. This will be The Empire Strikes Back. This will be the Two Towers, you know, type of sequel here. And, it, uh, yeah, it almost does live up to that quality, too, honestly, in terms of, um, you know, just, just evolving on its predecessor, on the first film. So, the story uh, basically starts with this long uh, Gwen Stacy, who's now Spider-Woman, uh, or Spider-Gwen, I guess she was originally Spider-Gwen, now she's Spider-Woman, whatever the deal. She's Spider-Woman now. Her Peter Parker, who's actually the lizard on her Earth, uh, she, he actually dies. And her father, Captain Stacy, is after Spider-Woman. He doesn't know that his daughter, Gwen, is Spider-Woman. So, unfortunately, he finds out the hard way, and it's pretty heartbreaking but she hooks up with these members of the Spider Society, which are uh, these these two spider people, Miguel, who's played by Oscar Isaac, and he's basically the Spider-Man of 2099, like the future Spider-Man with the claws and everything, and he was kind of like vampiric and stuff. It was pretty interesting uh, comics, and that is straight from the comics, certainly. And also a pregnant Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew, here, who is... Uh, well, they're always after setting timelines straight, you know, and making sure that uh, things from other universes don't cross over and change the proper evolution of that Earth, you know, in terms of the canon, the storyline. So that's a big part of this movie, of course. Uh, so their job is always putting stuff, you know, back to normal, back in line with, with canon. Uh, and Miles also inadvertently uh, created this villain called the spot uh, it's this new villain that can travel through space and time he can create these portals on his body and stuff and later he becomes even more powerful kind of accidentally um, he reveals that the spider that bit miles was actually from another earth uh, so that's the only reason why miles got his powers he was never really supposed to be spider-man this is going against canon against the way it's supposed to be you know which obviously is a big point of the film here uh, Gwen is told to leave Miles behind after visiting him, because they're good friends, of course, from the first film, as we know. Uh, but, uh, sh she tries to leave him, but he winds up following her. He can go invisible. It's one of his newer spider powers, I guess, is that he can be <laughs> cloaked and invisible. And so he followed her undetected into the Spider-Verse. And they wind up on this other planet, uh, where there's a different Spider-Man, uh, and... Miles winds up saving this Earth's version of Captain Stacy, but this character was supposed to die. And so, you know, Gwen tries to stop him, but he just thinks he's, you know, that, that she's looking out for him. So he's just being the hero as usual. So it all makes sense. I mean, of course, he's going to try and save someone if they're in danger of death. So he does, but that messes up the timeline. And Miguel tells Miles that, you know, a, a captain must die on every Earth. You know, that's the story of Spider-Man. You know, I guess it's just like Uncle Ben, you know, or, or somebody's uncle, you know, has to die, it seems, in every reality. You know, it's got to stick to that storyline. So, because Miles messed that up, you know, he's in trouble now. And uh, then they tell him that because his dad is a captain, or about to be a captain, uh, Miles' dad, that is, is about to become a captain, Miles freaks out about this naturally, and uh, he thinks, oh, no, he's going to die. So... He escapes, he gets away from them. There's a huge chase involving all the members of the uh, Spider Society, including some very funny little <laughs> little references to uh, some classic Spider-Man uh, cartoons and things. Uh, very cool stuff. And uh, they chase him, but he gets away. 
And unfortunately for him, he thinks he's going back home, but he actually winds up going to this other universe. It's like Earth 42. And that's actually the universe where the spider that bit him came from. And that's how he got sent back there because he went through a machine that identified, oh, his powers came from here. So therefore he's going there instead of his actual, you know, Earth. So he uh, winds up bumping into his mom that doesn't really recognize Spider-Man or know what, what that is or anything. Uh, and that's a little weird, right? So we figured out why that is. And uh, then his uncle comes home. His uncle is alive. His uncle Aaron, who was the Prowler, he he died and in into the Spider-Verse, but he's alive. And he winds up capturing Miles. The reason why his uncle kidnaps Miles is... Well, we find out very quickly that he knows that he's not Miles. Uh, Miles assumes that his uncle is the Prowler here, but it's actually this Earth's Miles Morales who is the Prowler. So he's, you know, the, the badass version, I guess. He's got the different hairstyle and everything. And and so he's um, he sees this Miles Morales and is like, what the hell? And so... Yeah, we don't know really what they plan on doing with this Miles, but they're holding on to him. They're keeping him kidnapped for now. Meanwhile, uh, after Gwen gets kicked out of the Spider Society for bringing Miles there and, and having him, he, he winds up causing all the problems and everything, of course, um, you know, she assembles her own team. So she's like, forget the Spider Society, you know, I'm going to assemble my, my own team of spider beings to uh, go after Miles and save him once she realizes that, you know, what, what has happened here, that he's in a different uh, universe. So she recruits a whole bunch of cool spider people here, including uh, Peter Parker, who now has a little baby uh, as well, that probably seems to have the spider powers as well. <laughs> Looks like they, he had a kid with Mary Jane. Uh, and uh, also Spider-Man Noir, Noir, you know, Spider-Man Noir, who was voiced by Nicolas Cage in the previous film. And Spider Ham, who was John Mulaney in the previous film as well, and there's an anime spider, you know, person in a mech suit, and, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of them. Um, so that's where the film ends: is that she's running towards the screen, and it goes to black. Uh, Gwen is after uh, saving Miles here. So that's what we're gonna get in the final film, which is uh, titled Beyond the Spider Verse. So looking forward to that. Uh, there is no post credit scene here. Uh, there's some cool stuff during the credits, though, like right away. There's some really nice animation uh, there. So definitely stick around for that. But once it gets to just basic credits, you know, you can you can leave if you want. You don't have to wait uh, the whole time. So what can I say about this movie that didn't work for me? Well, very little. <laughs> I have very little to say that it could be even be construed as negative. It's a bit long. I, I found that the time that Miles spent with his family, his mom and dad, uh, you know, just talking about his future in college and all that stuff was kind of like, eh, okay, and then they have a party, and then they have this big long conversation at the end of the night, and then he's he's grounded, and, and then they meet Gwen, and all this stuff that happens, and I thought that we didn't really need that much of that, we didn't really need that much of that story. Um, the, the film is <laughs> quite a bit jarring for some that, you know, if you haven't seen the first film, it's okay. You don't absolutely have to see the first film because they do explain quite a bit in this one uh, about, you know, how we get Miles Morales and all that stuff, but, you know, how he got his powers, etc. But the thing is um, that this film is, you know, it's it's a lot. It's really, really fast and it's really in your face. So if it's someone just coming into this movie for the first time, not knowing much about Spider-Man other than, you know, what they grew up with, you know, a long time ago, it could be like, who, what the, who's the, who are, who are all these spider people? What's going on here? You know, it could be a bit, you know, jarring to someone that's been out of the world of Spider-Man for a long time, but clearly it's not really aimed at, uh, you know, <laughs> audiences that are, uh, you know, that old, if they're, uh, if, if they are, you know, that not that big on Spidey, if they're not up to date on um, the latest comics and films and so on. So, yeah, I mean, that could happen, but that's okay. Uh, I mean, certainly, uh, visually, the film is really amazing. There's so many different ways that the artists, um, you know, interpreted the different worlds here. And uh, my favorite is definitely the, uh, uh, you know, the, the spotty background where there's all these little dots on the screen and everything, and it looks like an old comic book, just like it should, you know? And there's a whole universe that looks like that, and then there's there's parts of, of, of other universes, too, that, that look like that. There's certain scenes that have those dots, you know, because they're done in that comic book style. You know, they want it to look just like... 
uh, a comic book from you know like 80 years ago like they want to look at looking really old school so i thought that was cool um the background stuff though it's kind of fuzzy because it's kind of like a 3d comic book you know if you're just watching this movie just straight up just standard you know nothing special no frills uh nothing i that's what i saw and it was very much like okay like that lamppost is all just like like blue and red like a 3d comic book i feel like i need 3d glasses to see the background you know uh, but uh but again, that's another stylistic choice, and it didn't bother me too much. I just thought it was kind of eh, a little fuzzy, you know. I mean, I'd, I'd kind of prefer a sharper background, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, again, just so many wonderful ideas uh, for the artists, uh, you know, to play around with. Uh, I really liked how they did the Ben Riley Scarlet Spider as well. I like the way that they animated him. It had just the style was just very, very comic book uh, ish, and uh, you know, very, uh, very '90s animation. I thought it was wonderful. Um, so just so much to look at here. Uh, certainly too much. You definitely want to see it again to, to, you know, to really take in all the visuals. Um, you know, you definitely, if you're watching this, you know, at home later on, you don't want to be looking at your phone. You want to be watching this movie, eyes to the screen, glued, because there's so many great uh, benefits here. Um, fun little quick shots of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's uh, Spider-Man as well. You know, there's uh, all sorts of little clips here. We also uh, get Ralph Bakshi's Spider-Man uh, cartoon from the 60s very briefly. Uh, they play the theme there. The dun, 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 dun. It was great. I, you know, nice little little nod there to the 60s Spider-Man that, uh, well, that I grew up with in the 80s, certainly, on reruns. Uh, the spot was great. Jason Schwartzman uh, did a great job uh, playing this character. Um, he's a sympathetic villain. I thought they did a great, great, uh, I, gr great job with him as that kind of sympathetic pathetic villain he's out for vengeance but he's also feels like his life has been ruined and changed forever so he's got nothing to lose so you kind of get that perspective um you know even though he's obviously being very destructive uh donald glover appears as this alternate version of uncle aaron the prowler as well and mrs chen from venom the convenience store owner there uh, from venom also appears here briefly too so i was like hmm, that's that's awesome that's fantastic stuff to see so yeah, it was visually stunning, uh, almost too much for the eyes to drink in sometimes. Uh, some visuals were just, whoa, what's going on? Holy crap, you know, and it's just, wow, it, it, it's, it's hard for your eyes to keep up with it because everything is so fast. You know, the animation is so fast, the action is so fast, and and um, it's, it's, wow, it's it's got an amazing pace to it. I got to say, the editing is absolutely brilliant, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that uh, it is... Gonna please everyone that saw Into the Spider-Verse, for sure. So while I thought the Miles family stuff was a bit eh, too much, you know, a little too long, could have been cut out, and the fuzzy backgrounds that look like 3D comics were a very cool effect, I just kind of myself prefer them to be a little bit sharper, something a little different there. Uh, but this movie was obviously very ambitious, and it really, really was a wonderful, uh, you know, place for all these artists to just you know just go nuts with the coloring and 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 different things and different styles and i mean there's even a, a spider punk played by daniel kalua you know who's you know who looks like literally just like uh, animated as if he was just a paper version you know of spider-man you know with this mohawk and everything really cool stuff so just little things like that really impressed me i definitely want to see it again i can't wait for the next one and that's exactly what this film did for me was it did its job perfectly getting me and the rest of everyone you know all audiences ready for beyond the spider-verse so definitely looking forward to that and this was uh yeah this was this was a near perfect sequel uh, definitely up there with uh, some of the great sequels of all time so i'm gonna give spider-man across the spider-verse a 9.5 out of 10. This is the first 9.5 I think I've ever given. So close to perfect score. And yet, yeah, I'm still between a 9 and a 10, so I'll go 9.5. So, yeah, that's that's what I'll do now. Uh, when I see it again, who knows, right? But for now, that's my score. And I thank you guys for checking out this review. And until next time, this is Neil. Peace.